Hello and welcome everyone to this uh, online chat uh, about community onboarding and, ac and activation. Uh, my name is uh, Matthijs Fleming. I'm Open Social's uh, Community Strategy Consultant, uh, and I'm joined uh, today by Dale Walker of Vaccinteo. Uh, Hi, Dale. Good to see you. Hi, Matthijs. Thanks for having me. And thanks for joining. Um, and we are touching on a very important topic today, which is community onboarding and activation. And uh, this is a step that uh, we see a lot of um, uh, community builders are not really consciously uh, approaching. Uh, often this is approached uh, as just functional onboarding. People onboarding them, getting to getting them to know the platform and how it works technically. However, you also need to show uh, value and community value immediately uh, when they join, because there's never a second chance for a first impression. That's in real life. That's the same with online uh, communities, and that's crucial. Uh, and actually, onboarding is not just about getting them uh, to, to learn the platform, but it's actually a, a long haul process. It's a longer process. And onboarding is a crucial first step and, and one of, and of the most important step uh, in, in your engagement strategy. And it's the first stage in your engagement strategy. And why that is so important is, is actually research is showing that if you don't make, if you don't get your new community members to, to contribute ASAP, uh, chances are very likely they will never contribute and never be active. So it's really crucial that you get that done. So today, uh, accompanying an article which I wrote about uh, onboarding, um, is we will show an example of how Sinteo is doing their, their onboarding. Uh, that hopefully will give you some inspiration uh, to work uh, on your onboarding as well. Um, and uh, so, like I said, it's not about platform or just platform onboarding, but it's about showing value immediately and, uh, and make it easy as possible for people to interact with the community for the reason they came to it in the first place. Right. So why did uh, someone join your community and why are they, are they sticking? Uh, you should have this clear when you have created your community strategy uh, and when you have researched the needs of your potential community members. What are they looking for in their community? Why are they joining? What do they want to do? Uh, based on that, you should make that part of your community onboarding to immediately show that value and trigger them to come back. Uh, so it's not just about platform, it's also about the community. Um, but uh, for now, because we will uh, go into a bit more detail about that uh, later on. Um, uh, Dale, could you please introduce yourself and Xinteo uh, a bit? Sure, sure. Um, so yeah, my name is Dale Walker. I'm a uh, consultant. I have a background in circular economy and, and sustainability. Um, and more recently, I've, uh, I've, I play the role of a community manager for uh, a, a, a program we run called the Leadership Vanguard through Zinteo. Uh, so Zinteo is a, um, is a consultancy um, focused on helping businesses to create uh, planet positive growth. And the Leadership Vanguard in particular is a leadership development program that we run for executives of large organizations where we, we work with them for nine months, a small group of leaders um, to give them the skills, the knowledge and the awareness to, to create kind of positive change, positive systems change um, in their work and in the wider, the wider world. Um, and yeah, so I, I lead our community uh, engagement efforts on that for our current uh, cohort of participants and for our alumni as well. Okay. And did that community already exist before you used an online platform to facilitate them further? Yes, it did. Um, the, the program will be running for about five years, I want to say, um, before we decided to use um, a dedicated online platform. So we had multiple um, of micro solutions, let's call them. You know, we used email. We we tried some instant messaging platforms, um, but we didn't have one platform to bring the whole community get to, together in one place. Okay. Uh, and what was the main reason uh, why uh, you uh, were using uh, an owned platform or uh, the open social platform in this case? What were some of the main pain points you were trying to solve with that? I would uh, a, a big pain point was. Um, so because our uh, participants in the program, they all come from different organizations. And so there was a lot of um, interoperability issues. They not not all of them used, you know, Microsoft, not all of them could use Google because of firewalls. So we needed something that um, that was kind of a level playing field for all of them. And that's what open social um, allowed us to do. Um, so that that was probably the 
the the main reason um and then we didn't as i said earlier we wanted it all to be in one place so we were doing you know messaging in in one location file and information sharing in another place and event management in another place but by using open social we're able to do that now all in one place they can go to one you know website and find everything they need for the program there yeah cool okay so centralizing your efforts and people knowing always uh, having access to it exactly um, um, and uh, so uh, if, if I understand correctly, the main uh, the, the type of community is sort of like a community of practice, right? Where you want your your different uh, uh, community members to work together and, and learn from each other uh, on how to adopt uh, sustainable uh, uh, processes. Um, so yeah. and what is the main um, format in which this is taking shape? Is that like working groups or, or educational uh, programs? It's um, it. It changes a little bit over the nine months of the program. So they start off and it's it's one group. Um, just so you know, kind of numbers wise, we're looking at between 25 and 30 people in a in a cohort for this nine month program. And they start out and it's one big group. It's mainly us as the as, as the team kind of sharing information and working with them as one big group. And then very quickly they split into uh, smaller groups that focus on particular topics and they work together very closely in those groups over the remainder of the program to you know come up with new ideas to implement solutions that are related to that topic that they focused on um, in be it you know circular economy or energy access um, things like that okay and that is only connections between uh, the same people in the same cohort or also just cross community wise so between different groups and different cohorts uh, we, we we try as much as possible to to encourage the current cohort to connect uh, with the alumni of the program, so we have you know over 150 alumni of the program, um, and previously we it was only really in uh, physical events where they were able to meet one another and and even know that these alumni were were part of the program. But now we're trying more and more to 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 make that connection between the cohorts even stronger, um, and yeah. Open Social is definitely helping us to do that. Okay. Cool. Very, very interesting. We could talk a lot about more about uh, the, the cross uh, uh, functionality between events and the online community. But now we should focus on the onboarding. Um, and so um, I, let's, let me share my screen again. I think an important uh, part uh, of the onboarding, uh, um, uh, like I said, is getting members to cont contribute as soon as they can. Uh, I touched on this before, but this is a research by Richard Milton, which is actually showing uh that once members have reg registered it's critical they make their first contribution as quickly as possible so it's really showing that with every hour passing uh after someone has registered for your community uh, the likelihood of them ever contributing uh, uh is declining uh, so it's really important that as part of your onboarding you are not only onboarding them uh, to the platform and getting them to learn the platform uh, but also getting them uh, to contribute uh, and contribute actually related to the community goals or to the reason why they have joined your community. So connect them with peers or connect them with their cohort and so on. Um, uh, so you need to make that first step. You need to think that through. What do you want them to do first and make that simple uh, to, uh, to complete that first step? uh um and think that through and maybe even uh, think of a series of steps you want them to take so you can maybe follow up on, on follow up baby steps uh as a follow-up to that first onboarding maybe a week after or two weeks after and make that more a series of uh um series of calls to action because like i said it's your first step in your retention and your engagement strategy it's not just uh, a one action that we're talking about here uh, with onboarding um, so we can separate onboarding in uh, platform onboarding and community onboarding. Um, so Dale, could you elaborate a bit on how you do the onboarding uh, on the Xinteo Reef, which is the name of your online community, which we haven't touched on yes. yet? Here yes. you go. Yeah. Sure, sure, thanks. Um, and so what you're looking at here is our um, our dashboard, our landing page. Once uh, participants have uh, created a, a registration on the on the Open Social platform, we because we're a small group um, of participants being onboarded at any one time um, we we're onboarding them not just onto the the reef onto the the community platform but also onto the leadership vanguard at the at the same time um, and so typically they're first told about their participation in the program by someone in their organization their HR lead and then we reach out to them um, uh, through through an email where we congratulate them on being selected for the program 
and we invite them to register for an account on the reef. Um, so they do that. They go and create a um, create a registration because it's a private community. We um, you kind of accept um, let them into the platform, and then once they're there, they land on this page where um, this is slightly updated um, and changed because we're a few months into the program. Um, but the very first thing we wanted was on that landing page to have the actions that we wanted them to take on the on the platform. And the very first one was to to create a profile. We wanted to make sure that everyone who had an account on the platform had created and added some detail to their platform because we wanted them to see who else was on the program with them and to know, you know what they did, what their roles were, what organizations they were. So we we used these the, these buttons in the first block to say, okay, first thing you do, go and create your profile. Yeah. And then is that also you know, how you sorry, is that also how you communicated it? Because I mean, of course, you as an organization, you want them to create a full profile because it looks good and you have the data on them. Uh, but did you also communicate it in such a way why you want them to complete the profile? So probably because the other people then in the cohort know who they're talking to, they might want to reach out and connect. Uh, maybe you use some, uh, some, some parameters for them to connect, maybe location or their fields of expertise. Is that how you did it? Exactly. We did. We we absolutely told them why we wanted them to create a profile for that for that exact reason. Um, and we gave them some guidance on kind of the minimum information that we wanted them to provide. Um, so we said, you know, we please please provide a photograph. Please share your 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 role. And then we also used the tags to allow people to share what their expertise areas were. Because as the community grows, we want people to be able to connect with other people with the expertise that they need. Um, you know, as they're working on the projects in the program itself, they might realize, oh, we need someone with certain expertise who's not in our group. And so they can then find another yep. member with that expertise using those tags. Yeah, OK, cool. But I interrupted you, so interrupted you. So please no go. Problem. No <laughs> problem. Um, so creating a profile was the first step. The second step um, was we wanted them to join a group. So we created groups uh, for each cohort of the um, of the program, and we Wanted them to go and join, to go and find and join their cohort. And we didn't give them too much instruction. We wanted to use this as a way for them to explore the platform. So there's a little bit of platform onboarding. Um, so we said, um, you know, look for the group for your cohort, the 2022 cohort, and uh, and join that group, which they all did. Um, and that was a way of getting them to to be able to kind of clearly see who was in their particular group. And we had some other kind of further detailed information about their cohort on the program on the about page of that group. Um, and then the third thing, actually, which um, you can't see here because that's it's it's it, it it only lasted for a short a short time. But we actually used the challenges um, feature, so we created a challenge, um, and we said once you've joined the group, go and view the challenge. And there we actually asked them. You you spoke about contributions. That probably was the first contribution we asked them to make was to um, submit an idea to the challenge because I mentioned that they later on in the program break into smaller groups to focus on particular topics. And we wanted them to have a role in selecting what those topics would be. And so that challenge was set up to get them to submit the ideas of what they wanted to focus on as um, as topics. Ah, cool. That, that's interesting. So they, they just joined the program and they can actually immediately contribute and maybe um, ask a question or at least indicate what topics they would like to see co covered in the program. and then. Um, uh, and is it, did you also use the full uh, uh, um, activation module for this or the full um, uh, challenge module for this where others could vote on it or where others could also contribute to the ideas? Yeah. Yes, exactly. So it was it, we, we used various phases of the challenge. We started with them submitting just very general ideas for challenges. And then we used the voting to refine down to a smaller number of challenges and let them all comment and vote on one another's suggestions, right. um, which led us to the final four challenges or four topic areas that we now have the cohort focusing on. Yeah, cool. Interesting. Um, and then as part of the onboarding, I also see here ah, the user guide. Uh, yeah, it, we separated between platform onboarding and open social need has, has user guides for this. And we also now have uh, interactive user guides where you have, actually have pop ups while you browse the, um, the platform for the first time, which then elaborates on what you can do there and how to use it. Uh, but you created, uh, you separated the user guide in the, in the different steps, I see here, right? Yes, we wanted to make it as easy as possible for them to 
to navigate and to use the platform without feeling like they needed to get directly in touch with with me as the community manager so so we took you know we we sat down and we thought what are the various actions we want them to be able to take we know we want them to as i said the first action submit a challenge idea so we created a little um i think we used the books and we created a detailed instructions on how to submit a challenge how to set up your profile um and we know that that was very kind of well used and much appreciated by the by the participants okay cool um and we also know that a best practice uh, uh for um yeah for 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 starting a community is starting small uh, right and we've talked a bit about ambassador programs and i know clinteo doesn't doesn't really have a full-fledged ambassador program but you did use the principle of starting small or starting with a phased approach uh, could you elaborate a bit on that yes yeah, sure sure so by by the nature of our our program we were we were able to start small so um just focusing on you know onboarding the first 25 participants onto the platform meant that we we were able to focus very particularly on them. And um, what I'll also say um, is we also had the good fortune of um, being able to do a sort of, uh, I'll call, I think we called it an alpha test um, of the platform while we were building it. So we actually introduced our previous cohort of participants to the platform as we were building it. That was, again, a very small group of 20, 25 people. And that allowed us to, to, to you know, fine tune the the onboarding process because we already knew them they were part of the program so we right. were able to show them the platform and then that helped us to create our onboarding plan for the very first cohort who were going to run the whole program on the on the reef um, the reef platform yeah cool okay so you, you sort of used the past uh, cohorts to actually give feedback to your so yeah so they were sort of your ambassadors at least testing your, uh, your yes and and do, are you doing all the welcoming uh, yourself uh, as a community manager, or do you have maybe uh, certain roles or people in the groups that are also part of welcoming people and managing the groups uh, and maybe helping you to run the the community or run those groups? Yeah, so we have um, a few members of the team, um, the the Zentea and the Leadership Vanguard team, who play those play those roles. So myself and a colleague um, are normally the first people to contact and to reach out. We would message. Um, as soon as someone had created a profile, we would message them and welcome them to to the platform, to the reef. Um, and then we have other um, members of the team who are responsible for the groups. So now that they're broken up into smaller groups, each group has got a, a lead, and it's that lead really who runs the conversations um, within the group on the reef. Um, those are um, those are members of the Zendaya team. We haven't gone as far as getting community members themselves to. Um, to kind of play play those roles, um, but it's definitely something we're looking at as a way to bring our alumni into the platform more actively um, by giving them some more active roles um, in the community. Okay, cool. And and then um, uh, in general, eh, because we talked about onboarding is not a short term; it's more a long term process, right? Yes. Uh, did you uh, do like personalized um, or or like a, a, um, a program for a couple of weeks to follow up what you want your new cohorts to do uh, instead of overwhelming with them with all those tasks at once? Did you have like a, a process uh, like that you that you uh, that you did to, as a follow up after the onboarding? Yes, yes, definitely. Um, we were we were very conscious of not overwhelming them at the start, um, and so we. We did. We broke down um, the various elements of what we wanted them to be able to do on the reef. So, so the first thing it was kind of just join one group, submit an idea, and then we let that go for a few weeks as they got used to it. And then we were able to go to the next phase of the challenge, and we could tie that up with an event. So we had a, a webinar with them all, where we they they'd already created profiles. I was able to actually do a, a kind of a a virtual run through of the platform, show them some of the other functionality that we hadn't yet gotten them to see, um, and then actually get them into their smaller groups and starting to work more more closely with one another. Um, so yeah, we did do that. Okay, cool. And and um, did you also use like a content and activation calendar for this, or did you um, maybe which included some some rituals? Right, we often see uh, in communities that they have like monthly recurring. Uh, columns or or, or um, highlighting community members or recurring things which which shows that they help in, in you know creating a habit of your community members uh, logging into your platform 
Uh, did you did you create some of those recurring uh, activities as well? We so we did have a calendar. I mean, we it, it, it was part of our wider program comms calendar, um, where we had kind of platform activity as as part of that. In hindsight, maybe not as granular or as detailed as as it could have been, but it was was certainly helpful. And then rituals wise, we we did not, and and, and we don't yet have, I would say, recurring rituals. Um, in in the sense that that you spoke about it, what 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 has developed, I would say, over time is um, some actions that 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 are perhaps approaching rituals. So maybe they're um, they will become rituals in the future. But for instance, things like um, you know we we've we've now been running for a few months. We run events and and it's become ritualistic in a way for the the follow up that we put on the reef and the conversation that then continues on the reef after an event has become ritual like in the way that it happens in the same way after each event you know we finish the event we post the recording we create a topic page and then there's future just further discussion about the um about the about the subject so that's that's the closest we've come i'd say to right. and, and those events are they recurring then are they like monthly events or they are they're 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 frequent either monthly or once every two months right. and that topic focused events and we, we touch on this because uh, uh, we see that, um, you know, after the onboarding uh, and it, it's personalized follow up, you know, what do you want your members to do next? And you, I think you gave a great example of following up on the challenge and, and getting them uh, you know, personally following up on the cohort, uh, you know, what do you want them to do next? Um, uh, and we also know this because um, we see that in, on average, uh, that's what research shows, that it takes about 66 days for people to move. Uh, to create a habit, actually, for for logging in, and and that's why it's so important, especially uh, you know, with your onboarding and as a follow up of your onboarding, to actually have a very detailed plan for those first first two months, roughly, for getting them to uh, to engage and to provide them with relevant uh, community value for them to to, to keep on logging in. Um, and you know, so those personalized follow up can can help, but a content and activation calendar and creating maybe some rituals in there can also really help. This is an example um, uh, I'm showing here. Uh, you see, often see a, a content and activation calendar segmented uh, by target group. Uh, that can be the type of uh, the type of member, but it can also be the, the level of activities. If they are already very active, you want to approach them differently than members who are not very active yet. So you want to tailor that approach. Uh, a theme you often see in communities like a themed uh, themed month uh, uh, or, or a theme uh, of, of a certain blog or your a theme of group. Uh, that you want them uh, um, uh, that you want to uh, use uh, as an as an angle uh, to create a content and activation for your for your community members frequency uh, this is more ritual wise right you want recurring things uh, who has who is doing it so it could be the community manager but we talked about ambassadors or leader or maybe um, a community leader or a teacher or some expert uh, that wants to profile himself or, or herself that you want to use and different types of content all right, so I, I think, uh, thanks for sharing uh, your uh, your example of how Xinteo is doing the onboarding, uh, Dale. Um, I think um, as a follow-up, uh, uh, please, for people interested in doing onboarding and, and uh, building uh, an engagement strategy, download our community building guide, uh, which is um, uh, showing 10 steps uh, for the first year of community building, which I hopefully, uh, hopefully will be helpful to some uh, uh, people watching this video uh, and looking for some inspiration. Uh, and it's, a, it's of course a company an article which uh, we wrote on onboarding and activation which goes into uh, a bit more detail uh, about these steps all right dale thank you very much and thanks for watching my pleasure thanks for having me bye bye let me see uh, <laughs> Opname stoppen. <laughs>